If it interests you, go for it. If bowling interests you, go for it. There's people that do it for a living. You can do anything for a living. There's people that play chess professionally. You know, you can swim professionally if you like swimming in the summer at the lake. There's so many things you can do. I'm starting to really enjoy this ridge on his nose. He has such a thick bridge, and it kind of branches up into this area. So I'm going to cut away from this a little bit right there. And I'm going to define this shadow a little bit. I'm going to drop down into a saturated color here, maybe a little darker. And uh, just to find that ridge, but not too harsh. It's not a square or anything, but it's really fun. Those are the unique parts of people's faces that you just have to grab hold of. You have to um, take advantage of because it, without these little idiosyncrasies and these little uh, unique forms on everyone's face, that's what they don't have a unique face. You know, this is what makes it unique. So right there, that area on Tom Cruise. I probably want to soften a little, being so far zoomed in. I I lost a lot of the uh, the subtlety of it, but I can go back in and just. Lighten it up a little bit. Maybe play with this area of the face around it. Maybe make sure that's where I want it to be. And then I can use that as a as a guide for how dark I want to get with the shadow. Hope I'm not talking too much shop during these. Maybe that's uh, what you like. Maybe it's not. I uh, Sometimes you don't have a lot to say when you're painting. I used to be very quiet when I was painting. I sometimes watch TV. I'll watch movies. I'll watch... Um, I'll put music on in the background, and it really helps me get through whatever I'm working on. So sometimes that can be a huge advantage, is having something to not concentrate on. Maybe a familiar movie, or I know Tom Richmond, um, an illustrator I know, he, uh, he listens to books on tape when he draws. And that's just his way of, uh, of working. It helps keep his mind focused enough, and it helps distract him just enough so it doesn't get quiet and boring around him. So I used to do that, but now talking is fun, but I, I, uh, I like someone else talking while I'm painting. Though I have been known to be a gabber, I tend to talk quite a bit. I'm sure anyone that knows me is probably chuckling as I say that. So shut up. <laughs> um, but no, it's good, it's good. I guess you need something to listen to while, while you watch me paint. So I'm starting to get these values established. I'm going to start working on the background and get... Uh, I know I made it a little lighter earlier, but I'm going to I'm going to go back a little and try something darker. I haven't been using my palette much lately. You can see that's a good way for it to, for me to start, but it might not always be the best way to finish it up because once you have a certain areas established, you can just go ahead and uh and uh use that areas relative to the color around you because all painting is. My friend Jason Seiler said this once and once again I don't know if he said it first or what, but he said painting is just one nice color or one good color next to another. And that's true. It's uh if you can paint something that's very yellow, really, really yellow, and then the color next to it might look really blue. But it's not that blue. It's you'll find it's maybe more of a gray or a greenish color. But uh because everything else is so yellow, it's just relative to that color. So painting is relative. So um when I'm uh, when I'm throwing in this color, it looks like a bluish gray. But actually, I look at it, and this is on the brown spectrum. It's sort of the red. It's because everything here is so orangey. It just looks so gray, and it's the bluest part of the piece. So I'll finish that up. Maybe get a little lighter as you go down, just for effect. I'm not really doing anything uh, for a reason in the background. I just like uh, I like pe when I see, see those old classic portraits. I like portraits, portraiture in general. I, um, I'm going to be experimenting with some distortion in portraits soon, quite a bit more. And I like the painterly background. I like seeing brush strokes. I like when there's something in the piece that pulls you in and says, this is just strokes on a surface. This is a painted surface. But then an illusion here that says this is real, that juxtaposition really, really is nice to me. So I like to try to employ pieces of work that I've seen that I like into my own work and having a painterly background I think like almost a smoky hazy background is nice so I'm just kinda gonna rely on that for now um, not worry about it too much I might go in and change it later I might change the color I've been known to do that but um, painting the background first or last doesn't bother me too much sometimes I stick with the color that's there sometimes I'll do something totally new and I'm 
going to go ahead and erase some of these lines in his face. So as you saw before, I'm just taking this drawing and I'm painting white over the lines because it's a black and white drawing. I'm just going to go ahead and paint out some of these areas so that there's not as much texture. Sometimes I like to texture my work, sometimes I don't. But for right now, I know that this painting is coming along looking um, pretty nice as it is. And I don't really necessarily need the pencils in there, or the pencil lines. I'm going to go ahead and take them out, especially where it doesn't really meet with my painting. If I changed it, like right here on the neck or on the shirt, it's, uh, it's always great to go in and, and tidy it up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make his neck a little broader. Whoops, wrong layer there. That happens. I'm going to jump back up here to this and desaturate that a little. There we go. So he's got a pretty pale neck, but it's a little broader than I made it over here. And I'm going to take this gray. I don't want this to be bluer than the background. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'll make it bluer in the background so the blue looks a little warmer. I'm going to go ahead and use a blue-gray there and start spelling out his shirt. Well, I enjoyed how long his neck was, so I'm going to take that back. I'm just hitting Control-Alt-Z to step back several steps, and I'm going to use that to my advantage and make his, his neck a little longer. I didn't want to take too much length off of it. It's one of those pieces of exaggeration that I don't want to lose because I start looking at the reference too much. I'm very guilty of that. I start with a caricature, I end up with a portrait. And uh, that's sometimes a good method to work in because if if some people don't like exaggeration or some people have a trouble seeing exaggeration. So, you know, it might not be best to exaggerate all the way all the time. Sometimes it might be nice to uh, take a piece and, and uh, let it become more portrait-like because if you start with an exaggeration that you're really secure about, then maybe it's a good choice to let it go move towards a portrait. Maybe that'll help. Maybe... Maybe it's a safe ground to be working on. I guess that's up to you. Uh, whatever you want to do with your work, with your paintings. Um, just remember that whatever you're doing, keep it, keep it in mind. Keep focused during your piece, or your pieces, or your drawings, or your sketches, or whatever. And think about your objectives, because drawing and practicing drawing is one thing, and getting your arsenal down, getting your craft honed in. But uh, once you get to a certain point, you want to start remembering what your purpose is for each piece. And for this, I'm just taking a sketch and I'm painting it digitally to share with some other people, with you, whoever's watching this. And um, I, I'm keeping that focus, but I also told myself before I started, I haven't mentioned it here, that I don't want to change the drawing too much because I tried some digital painting earlier today and I was recording it just like this, but I was finding that I was focusing too much on the drawing and it became portrait-like and I said, you know, I just want to focus on painting a little bit today. So um, I don't want to get too involved in the drawing process, so I want to keep the drawing. You can see I made a few changes in this piece, but not too much. 